Performance Plus presents the Summit Club Podcast, your business roundtable discussion for sales and business leaders with your host, Bill Stats. Hi, welcome to the Summit Club, a business roundtable. I'm your host, Bill Stats, and I'm with our Summit Club team, Rick Feinblatt. Morning, Rick. Good morning, William. John Thane. Hi, JT. Hey, always a good day when I'm with this group. And our marketing expert, John Navickus. Hi, John. Hey, how's it going today? It's good, and I'm sure you're well-rested after your Mummers activity this past (laughs) week with uh, the Philadelphia Mummers Parade. As we typically do, our conversation today is around a current business subject, which is entitled, Oh Shit, What the Hell is My Plan for 2020? It is uh, early in January, the 10th, I believe, and uh, it's never too late to start getting your plan implemented. And so right now, we just want to spend a few minutes today talking about some elements of your 2020 plan. Sherpa team, let's get started climbing to the top of the summit of planning and preparation and hopefully execution. How about if we talk about habits? Because uh, JT, you mentioned to me a book that you've been reading about habits and how hard it is to change them. Atomic Habits, and uh, not deep enough in to go into great detail on that, but certainly when you look at what your goals are for 2020, you can't do that accurately without understanding what the positive and negative habits are that you bring to the table. If you haven't done that at this point in your career, in your, your, your current position, now is the perfect time to do that. To set a goal and not understand how it fits in with your skill set and your habits uh, is going to make it difficult to achieve. You know what's funny when you say that? Sometimes you you got blind spots. And it might be a good idea to talk to someone that you work with or live with or whatever to get some feedback on stay away habits, habits that you don't realize may not be in your best interest. It's funny, in a luncheon this week with a VP of sales and a new sales rep, he said, uh, the VP of sales said, you know, there's certain things that really bug me, and I'll get you a list. And I said, how about if I get them the list? Because I'm going to go to a couple of salespeople and say, what really drives you crazy about so-and-so? To identify habits that may not be to your advantage. Well, you know, one of the first habits, since this is about 2020, and I'm not trying to divert the subject here, but the first habit you should have going into 2020 is knowing what you're trying to accomplish. And if you know what you're trying to accomplish, then your habits, positive or negative, really come into focus. But I sure do. I am stunned. Uh, as you know, I, I coach a number of uh, local businesses here in the Philadelphia area. And in December, we met to talk about where we were at against implementing our 2019 growth plans. And the next question was, what are your plans for 2020? And frankly, I was stunned. Everyone in the room did not have a 2020 plan. It's crazy, isn't it? So one of the thoughts is, if, you know, I'm sure all of us here have read Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, but whether it's Atomic Habits or Seven Highly Effective People, I think if you're out there and you haven't finished a plan for 2020, you may want to find a resource that can help you either eliminate a couple of bad habits or maybe replace them with ones that are better. You know, the start to your 2020 plan is really to look at your 19 plan. What, what were you trying to do in 2019? Now, if you didn't have a 2019 plan and here we are in 2020, there's a whole other subject we should be talking <laughs> about, which will be a future podcast. But, you know, where were you against your goals for 2019? It's time to take a look at those and what did you accomplish, what needs to be rethought about your plan, and what needs to be reset on that plan. And frankly, if you take those steps, you now have the basis for your 2020 plan. Right. And and I mean, I mean, I've talked to a lot of people who, uh, you know, will say, oh, I I got a plan. And you talk to them about what their Mm -hmm. plan is and you realize really quickly, it's not even remotely realistic. You know, you talk to a salesperson who goes, yeah, I want to, you know, uh, grow my income by uh, 20%. It's like, okay, well, what have you done the last four or five years? 
oh, five to six percent. So, well, how how will you do that? So, there's a difference between what you'd like it to be and what is realistic for you. And a lot of it is based on history. What have you done? What's the economy like? What's going on inside your company? Uh, if you're going to be able to grow your your business double digit, what is the company doing that has changed that's going to allow that to happen? And a lot of people just uh, they have no idea. Right. I think you're talking about the difference between a dream yeah. and a goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's really it. I mean, it's Rick, was, it's funny you mentioned, and even for any of the listeners, hey, what are you going to do for 2020? I'm going to make $300,000 in commissions from sales this year or whatever. It's a matter of you can say, I want to do anything, but going into 2020 and any other year or any other goal, what are your plans backing that out of how you're going to actionably accomplish that goal? How are you going to get there? And that really should be part of your 2020. It's like the 300,000 is going to come. You doing X, Y, and Z to get there, that's really the plan. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's a, a strategy that most people in sales learn or should learn and make a habit very early in their careers. And that's to, to break it down, break a big number down into a small number. If 300,000 is the goal for the year, what's the goal for the month? What's the goal for the week? What's the goal for the day? And that way you can measure it in, in much smaller blocks, and you can look at your progress throughout the course of the year and know whether you're on track. Right. But it's that principle of always do what you've always done. You're always mm -hmm. going to get what you've always gotten. And right. right. And I, I've worked places, I'm sure some of you have as well, where um, the, the plan and the goals are determined at the top, and then they're just fed down to people. So uh, a manager will decide, okay, here's, here's what we're going to do, and here's what you have to do. And, and, and in my mind, uh, and I've always done it this way, the first time you ask a salesperson, what are you going to do next year? And they've never been asked before. They go, well, I don't know. Tell me. You tell me. It's like, well, if there's 10 of you or 5 of you or 20 of you, if you don't know what you think you can do based on your book of business, how am I going to determine what we're all going to do? You know, uh, and once you get them involved with the process and you start to show them the best way to approach it, it's not a difficult thing to do. But again, I've seen companies where it just go, okay, here's what we're going to do and here's your share of it. Knock yourself out. You know, it's funny. We, you know, we wrote the outline for the script for this program and we led off with habits and plans based on 2019. I went out to heads of sales, VPs of sales and the two that are in front of me that I'm looking at now, one is, well, the first thing you need to do is take a look at 2019. How did it turn out? Did it go according to your plan then, or did your plan fall apart in quarter number two? Uh, start with the previous year. And the other, other one says, why don't you ask yourself whatever happened to, and then fill in the blank, old customers, old contacts, old prospects, uh, old relationships, whatever. But again, it's just taking a hard look at the past to see, okay, is that the way I thought it was going to be? And if not, what are you going to do to change it? Yeah. And if not, why? You know, what did I expect that, that yeah. was going to happen that didn't happen? And why would I assume potentially that's going to happen this year when it didn't happen last year? So let, let's pick up with that lesson or approach in mind and think about the next, you know, issue that might be of focus to you. How you... Uh, Managing with your boss, uh, how's that going? <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have them, and uh, some of them are really, really good, and some of them are, are not so good, but uh, in any event, you really have to figure out a way to work with that person and fr from your own perspective to manage them to help you. I mean, Rick, you make a great point, and, and previous to that, you talked about how often, and I know we're, we've talked a lot about sales here, and there's other goals that we can talk about. But when you're talking about sales, oftentimes that number comes from the top down. Mm -hmm. And managing your boss is making sure that you can turn that around and send it from your level back up to your boss so he understands what you know about your market that's going to allow you to either achieve that goal, surpass that goal, or God forbid, not make that goal. Mm -hmm. And if you know that your largest customer is downsizing, is moving their headquarters. These are things your boss may not know about, and you don't want to be held accountable for a goal that is not going to be supported by the market you're working in. Yeah. It's really hard to have a work around a bad relationship with your boss. Seriously, I mean, it's possible, but it really does 
limit. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, again, I think you have to. Uh, look, there are there are bosses you work for that just don't want to hear bad news. In my mind, I want to hear it as soon as you know it because it can be a better chance of trying to fix it. But if you're working for somebody who just doesn't want to hear bad news, you just got to figure out a way to try to, you know, uh, deal with it for, for your own preservation. Yeah. Because if you're constantly telling them and you're, you're constantly getting your head beaten in about it, I mean, there are things you're not going to fix. So if I told you, we're not going to make our goal this month because of these factors, and you don't want to hear it now, well, then I'm just going to wait until I know you're willing to accept it and, and deal with it then. It's not what I would want to do, but if you're not in charge, again, you got to figure out a way to, to you know, to coexist with the, the person you're working for or get another job. That's it. Well, those are your options. Selling up, managing up is not easy. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's really hard to do your best work when you don't have a very good relationship to your boss. And at the same time, how about direct reports? How about people that work for you? Do you have a Rowan? Meaning, do you have a go-to person? And Rowan, by the way, Rowan comes from that book we all love. And in fact, you and Rick did a great book review on a message from Garcia. Yeah. It's 120 years old at this point. And Rowan was the person who took it upon themselves through unbelievable obstacles to deliver a message to Garcia. So you better take an inventory there of what, what you've got going in, in the way of relationship with people that work for you. And how about peers? How important is it uh, when you put your plan together that you make the best use of those mates that are around you? I think that's a big effort to make sure that there's no duplication of the effort, that you're dividing and conquer. Everybody can hit the goal. Everybody doing their own way to push the oar to move the the boat at the same time. Then we're going to get into what's in your spacesuit for as far as are you doing everything that you should be doing to achieve your goals. Um, Are you organized? Are you disciplined? Do you fight procrastination successfully or not? I think that's where the view last year can help you because many times you're going to find out you've got exactly what you earned, which if you had wanted it bad enough, maybe you would have done some things differently, been a little bit more organized. You know, one of the goals, and I think that's the reason why we're sitting here and thankfully have an audience out there that's listening to us. One of the most important things about your goals, yes, there, there's numbers and, and different uh, metrics of achievement, but there's also those personal goals and personal strengths and weaknesses that you have to address. And how do you address those? Training, study, reading. Uh, this is all part of achieving your goals. You know what you need to get better at. It's something you can work on. You know what's really scary, and I'm just thinking about it as you said that. There's folks, they don't know themselves very well. You might just need to get serious about understanding what your strengths and weaknesses are. Take a really good, hard look. And in some cases, what you're not good at, find somebody that you can lean on that is. Like a yin and a yang thing. I mean, otherwise... It's like perfume on a goat. No offense to a goat. It's like you got to take a a good hard look at at what you're good at and what you're not so good at. And there are people that don't want to ask for help. We can analyze that, but they are. We keep doing the wrong or things that don't work just because they're really fearful of asking somebody else. I can't recall who brought this to my attention years ago, but it's something that I've lived with and kind of thought about throughout my career. The most dangerous people that you work with are the people who don't know what they don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, by the way, we're, we're all not good at something. And trying to figure out what that is and trying to find somebody who is, uh, Bill, as Bill said, who is good at it, this is part of business. You know, I mean, the people that walk around and go, yeah, I can do anything are the ones that scare me to death. Because <laughs> the reality is, no, they can't. You know what's really funny? Because you mentioned this before. I, can't, I wish I could remember the podcast. As a boss... As a manager, you're telling a direct report or a peer, whatever, about a particular issue or challenge or whatever, and you might as well be talking to the wall. And you bring somebody in from the outside or right. somewhere else who says it, and it's like, wow. It's like, whoa, what, I mean, I've been trying to tell you that. Yeah. Uh, they say that uh, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Well, you know what? I've been here a long time saying it, and you didn't get it. Yeah. So, yeah, that happened with one of the program directors in one of the stations I worked. He got fired 
And six months later, they brought him back as a consultant. And I was talking to him, and he went, it's the weirdest thing. What I'm telling them now as a consultant, and they're listening to, is exactly what I told them to do when I worked here, oh, and wow. I got fired. Oh, and I thought, well, that's, this is good. I'm going to get out of this place. <laughs> <laughs> one of the, and that's motivation, yeah. you know, to me. One of the questions you really need to ask yourself is, what or who are you doing this for? Do you have a really good reason to get up every morning, put your feet on the floor, and do your best work? Uh, you might want to figure it out. For some people, it's their kids, their family, um, they have aspirations, whatever. And for other people, it's who's waiting for me to screw up? Because if I think about them, first thing that comes to my mind is no way. No damn way am I going to prove them right. So I think you really need to get inside your own head a little bit and find out what, why are you doing this? And are you, or is it important enough to you to do your best work? Yeah, and I think sometimes people, just as a matter of course, end up in jobs that really don't fit their skill sets. And they don't excel in them, and they sort of muddle through. And, you know, if they sat and did some self-assessment, they might figure out, you know, maybe I'm not really great at this, but you know what, I, I think I am pretty good at it. Get in a place where you can excel. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to be in a job and you're in the mid-level all the time, I don't know what good that does you. Uh, and, and again, we all have skills that uh, and, and jobs that would suit them where I think we could probably uh, excel. Jeez, this sounds like a segue into what we're going to talk about next week, which is... Know yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Know yourself and disc profiles. Well, you know, thank goodness we have Rick for the technology issues because, <laughs> then, you know, one of the thoughts is, can you really use technology to your advantage or do you struggle with it? And in some cases, you know, we've all had a conversation with somebody that you're going, you know that there's an easier way to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, well, you know, if you went and read this or you took this little genius bar workshop, you could do a, yeah, yeah, I don't have time for that. And it's like, great. <laughs> you don't have time because you're spending too much time doing the stuff wrong. Exactly. And that's exactly. a really, really good point, Bill. Like, in terms of the technology, sometimes low-tech is going to do you a whole lot better than the app or some other program that's out there or some other gadget. Sometimes, if you're trying to build relationships, you're not going to really build the relationships through emails and text messages. Guess what? Pick up the phone. Call the person. <laughs> it's not hard. All right? It might be a little retro for some of the people listening to this. Pick up the phone. Social networking is picking up a phone. You really get out there and go face to face. Yeah. Meet them for lunch. Meet her for lunch. Get to know the person. Body language, inflection goes a long, long way. Even in terms of, hey, I have an app that's going to let me do this and that. You know what? What about a pencil and paper? You can sometimes write, do sketches, figure things out a lot faster than the app or touching on the tablet's going to let you do. I don't want to sound, you know, like hating technology, but sometimes it, it's an extra step that's more flash and buzz than actually helps you get the job done faster. Well, I guess workspace, we're getting near the end of our list for today, but you got to have a place to work. You got If you're going to get organized and you're going to have a good plan, you know, the launch pad really is is that space that, that you're working out of. And what's it like is it doesn't have to be livable, but it certainly should be workable. What about the stack of to-do uh, <laughs> uh, lists from 2019? Mm -hmm. Maybe those need to be cleaned off your desk, oh my God. either completed or... It was a good idea. Yeah, or, <laughs> or put on your, your list to start 2020. Dress for your success, not for... Uh, GQ, but just for your prospect, know your audience. Always look like a professional, whatever that means, squared away. Does that mean you shouldn't show up in a, in a tuxedo at a construction site? <laughs> probably probably <laughs> not a good idea, but you know, it's funny. People in industrial sales, maybe not so much in a marketing environment or pharmaceuticals or whatever, but in industrial sales, you, you ought to have a pair of uh, Timberland boots in your trunk of your car because a lot of places you're not getting in wearing Kohan loafers, which is <laughs> not going to happen. It's just one element of it. And plus, if you do get in, you look like you don't fit. You don't belong yeah. there. It's amazing how many people really misinterpret that because you read that and most people go, well, of course. We, uh, years ago, uh, instituted when it was uh, sort of in vogue and probably more so now than then, casual Fridays. And I would have salespeople come walking in on a Friday 
and they look like they're ready to go out and mow their lawn. And you go, what, what are you doing? And they go, well, it's Casual Friday. It's like, well, if a client calls you and you need to go out, you, you're going to go out like that? Oh, uh, and, and by the way, it doesn't mean you have to be internal. You know, in our world, everybody wore a coat and tie. On a Casual Friday, wear a pair of slacks and a, you know, a collared shirt and a sport coat. That's casual. Not shorts and a t-shirt. <laughs> well, last but not least, I think, you know, everybody ought to have in their minds, whether it's a time budget or a money budget, they ought to have some dimension around what they're willing to commit to get better, to grow, to learn. Different strokes for different folks, but I think if you're going to look at 2020 and you, you're like my wife, you don't want much, you just want more, better figure out what you're willing to invest to get it. Well, final thoughts for the folks out there from us today. Um, John Navickus, what are you thinking? I'm thinking just like working out or any other larger task, John, you mentioned it, JT, about breaking it down. In my mind, if you have the big goal, every night before you go to bed, just think, did I do anything today, big or small, that helped me push towards that, no matter what it is, even if it's a phone ring. <laughs> is that a new client bill I don't know what that was <laughs> but yeah just every day do something that gets you where you want to be a little closer and then a lot of little things are going to add up to one big thing that's my take well if you don't have a 2020 goal yet please get one and hurry and uh, if you're really not sure how to do it there are plenty of people out there who can help you get yourself organized actually we can help you get yourself organized so if you'd like Give us a call. It's not a difficult process, but you need to start now. Leave a message up on the website. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you think of JT? Well, I don't want to repeat, you know, the, the two really great thoughts that, that Rick and, and John came up with. Just repeat mine. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> now have the goal. Break it down into small achievable segments. That's that's the most important thing you can do for twenty twenty. But beyond that Know who you are. Know what you're not good at. Know what you have to improve at. Take some time to personally grow. Do some reading. Listen to podcasts. Figure out what it is you need to do to make you better at what you do so you can achieve your 2020 goal. Great stuff. For me, it's do your best. Make every day matter. Thanks for listening today. Don't forget to check out the Summit Club podcast website for other episodes covering all kinds of business issues and ideas. Keep in mind, the Roundtable provides business consulting services, meeting presentations, marketing resources, one-on-one coaching, team training. We can come to you or you can come to us in beautiful downtown Plymouth meeting, PA. If you like what you've heard, tell somebody, a friend, an associate, your boss. For myself, Rick, JT, and John, here's to your climb to the summit. See you next time. To learn more about the Summit Club Podcast, please find us online at www.summitclubpodcast.com. The Summit Club Podcast is recorded and produced by Inertia Marketing and Design, a full-service marketing, digital, and graphic communications agency. You can find them at www.inertia.marketing. Thanks for listening to the Summit Club Podcast, and we'll see you at the top.